OK. Well, I was talking to them. First thing, I'm going to say let's y1 equal 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x. And let y2 equal 2x minus x squared. OK, now we'll go ahead and plug this in. Now, I actually haven't plugged this in yet, so I know you guys are a little bit advanced. But what you guys should notice is when you guys look at the intersection of these two graphs, now should we, do we kind of have an idea of what a cubic looks like? That's like the S curve, right? So we know we can at least differentiate between these two functions because one's going to be an S curve and one's going to be a parabola. So let me just type this in while you guys have that. So 3x raised to the third power minus x squared minus 10x. And again, again, guys, just because we were able to use our calculator, we still have to um, show our work as far as what we're setting up into the calculator. So this is 2x minus x squared. All right, so I go ahead and graph this. Now, I'm not using my standard window, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on here. But if I, let's go and just go to standard so I can see the whole version, then I'll kind of zoom in. Oops, I might have hit it too quickly. kind of move too fast, so stop. Yeah. Sometimes if you touch too many buttons too quickly, then it tries to like overload, and it's kind of hard to get everything working. So sometimes you have to like turn it on and turn it back. But the nice thing is everything is still stored back in your calculator, so or at least it better be. All right, I feel like I broke my calculator now. Like last week, I literally had nine heads because I had three in this class, three in bio. My head was hurting. Econ, I had English, I had physics. I feel like it's because of econ right now. I wanted to drop it second semester, but you wouldn't let me. I mean, dropping econ is just knowing the opportunity cost. Stop. Right? No, it's a required class. No, not for econ. All right, let's do it this way. When we graph it, I have a graph that looks like this, and I have a graph that looks like that. Yes? Now, here's the important thing, guys. I don't know what's going on with this, so we're just going to go through this. f of x is this, or I'm going to call this y1, and this is our y2. Now, this is important because notice what's on top over here. In this region, we have our intersection points. Okay, And here, we notice that our y1 is on top. right? y1 is on top, y2 is below. But over here, y2 is on top and y1. So the reason why this is important, or this problem, is we got to make sure we zoom out in as far as our graph to make sure we get the whole scope of what the graph looks like. And then once we have the whole scope of what the graph looks like, then we can write the integral of what it's going to be. Now, I apologize for my technical difficulties, because it's not representing those graphs. But did anybody figure out what this x value, what was this x value where they graphed here? The x value was equal to negative 2? So here's x equal to negative 2. Here, I'm assuming x equals 0, and you guys verified that? Yes. Okay. And then this one was at x equals positive 2. Right? So now, when I set up my integral, Alex, you got this? So when I set up my integral that I'm going to type in that I'm not going to have room, or my calculator is not going to do for me, I'm going to do from negative 2 to, um, actually, let's write in the points of points of intersection are at x equals negative 2, x equals 0, and x equals positive 2. So from negative 2 to 0, what am I subtracting? I'm going to be subtracting y1 minus y2 dx. And then I have to add that area plus this area. Well, the integral for this area is going to be from 0 to 2. 
but it's going to be from y2 minus y1 dx. And when you guys type that into your calculator, you should get 24. Stupid calculator.